Hey everybody, uh, today I would like to talk about the lawnmower parent. Have you heard of that title yet? I had it up until around a month ago and somebody had posted an article on Facebook and I thought I would save it and um, I've had a chance to you know read some articles and do some research so I wanted to talk about it because I found it quite interesting. I'm sure you've heard of the helicopter parents and uh, if not those parents, these parents um, often hover over their children and uh, try to keep them out of harm's way and just not letting them maybe get to experience everything that happens in life where, you know, you start roller skating for the first time and mom and dad let go and God forbid you fall and you scrape your knee, right? These parents just want to hold on and don't want their children to have to experience hurt and failure and stuff like that. So today I would like to talk about the lawnmower parent. I um, have been asked, hey, since you've been starting these vlogs and vlogs, um, how do you have time for this, right? So I do home daycare and I have four children. I do take a lunch break every day and I give myself around 10 minutes during this time. So usually these videos are like a one take hit. <laughs> so I do it and what happens and what comes from it is what goes on. So I've uh, copied some notes down today so you may see me look down. It's just I don't want to forget anything and I'm already one minute in. So here we go. Lawnmower parents go to whatever lengths necessary to prevent their child from having to face adversity, struggle, or failure. Okay? Instead of preparing children challenges, they mow obstacles down so kids won't experience them in the first place. So the reason why I thought to talk about this today, I'm going to give a personal experience. And again, my kids are... Still at a young enough age where if I use them as an example, um, they won't kill me yet. Maybe in like 16 years when they see this on YouTube. But um, real, real quick, the example is my middle son. He has had no desire to learn how to ride a two-wheeler. Like none whatsoever. He has a scooter, hoverboard, all that jazz. He has two fast feet and get him wherever he needs to go really fast. My, his twin sister, on the other hand, had a desire, picked it up a while back and has been riding a two-wheeler. Their school every year in September has a bikeathon. I knew back in the summer that this bikeathon would be happening in September. And I would bring up to him, Malachi, do you want to learn how to ride, ride your bike? Do you want to practice? No, 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 no. Okay, fine. He's the type of child that if he's not ready to do something, you really, if you don't have to, don't make him because it's not going to be exciting. It's not going to be a fun experience. It's more going to be like pulling teeth. So I left it. Even though deep down I'm like, oh, is going to be there riding his bike with his um, training wheels not the end of the world but I knew it would bother him come the day so the day came last Friday and the night before he said oh I have to ride with my training wheels and I'm like yeah buddy because remember over the summer and even recently we were asking you if you wanted to practice and you kept saying no and he's like this is gonna suck like people are gonna make fun of me and I'm like okay here's the deal you know what People may say something and people may, may make fun of you, but you own it and you say, listen, it doesn't matter. I don't know how to ride my bike yet because I haven't desired to learn. And there's so many other things that you're good at. So don't dwell on that, right? But deep within, I was just, I wanted him to not have to go through that. So the day of, here we are, everybody's riding their bike and he's with his bike with the training wheels and I'm riding behind him and hoping for this like joyous, nice time. And straight out of the gate, he is patting me. He's like, my bike doesn't go fast enough. Um, people are looking at me. And I just had to keep encouraging them, him the whole time. So it wasn't the most enjoyable experience <laughs> I've ever had, let's say. We parked the bikes uh, a little while into it and we jogged because that was actually getting us there faster than um, riding the bikes and uh, came back and finished it off. And I went home. I left him at school. And, you know, there were a couple of kids that oh, you're not riding your bike, ah, ha, 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 And I, like, I stepped in and I said, you know what, that's really rude, right? Because obviously it is, and kids need to know. And I'm not afraid to tell a child that's not my own. You know, there's no need to be rude, whether it's to my child or somebody else. So I did that. I knew he was down. I knew we would have to have a conversation about this when he got home. Um, I had the afternoon here, I was off, and I decided to write a letter to him just pointing out all of the highlights, well not even all, but some of the highlights that he's really amazing at, and I'll show a picture of it um, at the end of the vlog, but like some of the things I wrote, uh, let me remind you of how incredibly talented you are, and I talked about the fact you've never had one swimming lesson in your whole entire life, yet you can swim laps, do front flips, dive in the water, um, 
there's not very many kids that haven't haven't done that right so I just went on and on just building him up just encouraging him just building back that self-esteem that may have gotten t torn apart earlier in the day so it was hard I wanted to be from the summer that parent that was like no get on your bike you gotta learn you don't want anybody to make fun of you but I had to put my hands up and like I said one of the hardest things but you know what it's a lesson he summed it up to being able to stand up to him for himself and say to a kid walking by you shouldn't laugh at me right so that that was my own personal experience but I'm gonna continue on here so these parents, they come from a good place. Maybe they have experienced a lot of shame, um, embarrassment throughout their life, and they're trying to, at all costs, have their children avoid this, okay? Um, or maybe they've been abandoned, right? So there's all those issues. All of us parents, um, or not, can empathize with a parent that we don't want our child to struggle. I already mentioned that. We don't want them to struggle. By doing this, we're creating and molding children that don't know how to face adversity and struggle. We're creating a generation who shuts down at the mere thought of failure, learning, leaving them to, minim to minimize or have no coping mechanisms, which is so important. Because the reality is, they go off to college and university, or they go out for that first job and they don't get it. If they've been provided with everything, or as we would say, bailed out by their parents their whole entire life, and the first time they don't get something, how do they deal with this? They break down, they, stre they stress, maybe they fall into depression or have anxiety. Maybe they call their parents and have their parents try to bail them out of the situation, right? We're not, if, if we are that lawnmower parent, we're not helping our children at all by creating these tools to help them go on through life. Um, we don't want also we don't want our children feeling entitled that for every situation they deserve this they deserve for their parents to drop what they're doing to bring their gym clothes to school or if they forget a water bottle or um, they don't make the rep, the rep team tryouts that their parents go and like remote the coach as to why didn't my child get to do this um, and on and on right we should be creating um, little humans that are gonna grow into big ones one day how to talk and advocate for themselves so at this age, it's a fine line, right? Because I'm a big believer that as parents, we do have to advocate for our children. But I, I also like to see my children be able to go and talk. If you have a problem with your sibling, with your other parent, with a friend, I want you trying to figure out this problem before I step in. Because if I'm always stepping in or your father is always stepping in, that's not helping you at all. It's pretty much that we're bailing you out every single time and you're just standing on the sidelines waiting for us to open a path open for you guys. So childhood is when they learn these skills, not making a team like I mentioned, um, having to express their feelings. All of this is um, something that they experience through childhood. So just in conclusion, what I would like to say is if we want our children to be successful, self-confident adults, we have to teach them how to work through their own struggles, process their adversity, and advocate for themselves. So I'm not saying this is easy. I'm not saying we're professionals at this in the Hamilton household. I'm telling you people, we take it day by day here. Day by day, okay? So, um, each, I feel like lately we've dealt with a lot of life le lessons and um, each one we sort of just unravel and try to work through it the best we can. So um, I hope this, I know it's a little bit longer, I hope this video has been helpful and uh, maybe if you haven't had a chance to read about this, I've summed it up enough for you to uh, just put that little seed in your head to think a little bit more about it when um, you're faced with the next um, struggle or roadblock with your children and that maybe we just give them a little bit more of the reins to dealing with the conflict first and um, we are there alongside them to help them through it as well. So thanks for listening again. I really appreciate it and uh, you guys have a great day. Bye.